this is Mike McCarthy from Front Office Sports, and welcome to the latest edition of our Shot Callers video series. We're thrilled to have a guest today, Marcus Spears, the big swagoo <laughs> from ESPN. Thanks for having me. Tell us about uh, TV so far. How yeah. do you like it? How's it gone? It's, it, it's amazing. Um, I think the first thing that comes to mind is the experiences, right? You, when you're an athlete, you never see behind the scenes. You never see what, what goes into a production of a game or an award show, um, the work that's put in prior to everything looking pretty to everybody that watches is on the tube. So it's, it's been an amazing experience for me. I'm, if anybody knows me, I'm myself on television. Um, I don't know any other alter right. egos. Uh, and, and it's been embraced by this company. It's been embraced by my colleagues and uh, that's what's most important to me. So it's been, it's been an amazing experience. Mike Greenberg himself has called you the next Bo Booger McFarlane. And Booger McFarlane went from the SEC network where you have worked to Monday Night Football. How does that feel? Uh, to, to have a, a compliment from an icon is special in, in any arena, but um, from, from G, as I call him, everybody else calls him Greeny, um, I was starstruck when I first worked with him. I have been watching this guy for 15 years. Um, obviously on Mike and Mike and all the other things that he was doing at ESPN and to have his approval um, for him to say he wanted you to be a part of a big project for him and something that he was trying to do uh, to me is the ultimate compliment. Um, when, when, when someone I ask in this company, in this business for you to work alongside of them, that's the best compliment you can get. You can tell me I'm good on television. I like your work. But when you invite me into your arena, um, that, that's a different level of respect for me. And, and him doing that, um, I can't think of <laughs> pretty much anyone that, uh, that, that could give you a more powerful stamp of approval. Interesting thing about ESPN is sometimes some of the biggest name talents, Jason Witten, uh, Emmett Smith, Urban Meyer, don't cut through on TV. Is TV the sort of animal where you have to work as hard as you did in sports to succeed in this business? Well, a part of it is that, and then then the other part is, you, sometimes I feel like alliances can cost guys, like these friendships and alliances. Um, and not, not saying any of these guys didn't have what it took, I just think sometimes the protective nature of you being a former athlete can cost you. Yes. Um, and, and that doesn't mean you get on television and bash players. You tell the truth. And that's, that's what I tell people all the time. Like, I, I'm, I'm going to call it like I see it. Right. And I think that's what people, ultimately that's what people respect. They might not like what you're saying because it's a player that they love or a player that they, they uh, or an organization that they love. But ultimately you just got to be frank. You got to tell the truth and you got to have some energy. I think sometimes um, guys come out of the league and they've had a lot of success and they like, hey, I just want to go do this because it's something to do. I can make make some good money doing it. Um, I came into this looking at it as a 30 year career. Right. So, um, you know, your approach to things are, are definitely something that sets you up to either have success or not. Yeah. And then you got to be good on TV. Like that's really what it boils down to. Yeah, and you are good on TV, and you do tell it like it is. I remember on uh, Get Up, you said Ben Roethlisberger is a liar when yeah. you're talking about uh, Antonio yeah. Brown. Talk, tell us about that. Well, in the, in, in the context, l listen, being in the locker room for as long as I was, you don't call a player out in the media and not have an issue. Right. That does not exist in the NFL. And um, I, a lot of times in television, because of time limit, things get sensationalized and they become, well, Ben's a liar. It wasn't Ben as a liar in life. That's not his character. I don't know Ben Roethlisberger like that. But what I knew in that situation is that you can't think everything's okay when you call your teammate out in the media. Like that's just, that's a part of the NFL code that never happens. So in that particular situation, and you know, I tell guys all the time when I, cause I know I'm a Sam, I see them in passing. Like, dude, it's not a vendetta against you. Like th these are things that you know, right. and, and I know as well. And um, so it's been, it's been, I've had some moments and I'm not, like I don't, I don't chase the big eye moment, and and I just say things like I I see it. I mean, it's right. it's really it's really that simple for me. But um, cutting through and being forthcoming with your opinions to me has never been a hard thing. I grew up 
arguing with my dad and my uncles about sports right. and all sports. Right. So um, it's, it's very normal for me. Yeah, Granny says you're one of the few NFL folks who can talk about any sport. Yeah. Uh, talk about that ability. It, it seems like only a few NFL players have it. Yourself, uh, Shannon Sharp is another one who loves the NBA. Is it about being a fan? Is it about following these sports? What is it? It's about being a fan first and foremost, I think. Um, and then the second thing is just, just wanting to expand your craft. Like, there are other conversations going on outside of football, <laughs> right? right? And uh, but one, one big thing for me, I never wanted to get pigeonholed as he's this. And because once that runs out or once there's no place for that, then you got to find somewhere else to go. Um, the, the, the one thing that I've learned from, from a lot of guys, especially Greeny and obviously Stephen A and Max and um, just Jalen and then talking, like, why not be involved in other sports? Why not have something to say? I played basketball growing up, so I'm a big basketball fan. I know a lot of guys that played in the NBA. And um, so, so it's, not, it's not unnatural for me. Baseball, my son is 10 years old. He's a lefty and he plays baseball. So I've learned a lot about baseball in the past four years, just watching him and wanting to know, you know what, if this is a possibility, I need to be able to talk to somebody about what he should be doing right. to have a shot. So uh, it, it kind of works organically for me. It's not something that I'm putting a lot of, uh, I need to go and watch every NBA game. Yeah. I need to know the name of the players and the stats. That, that's not what I'm doing here. What I'm doing is I'm being a fan I'm expressing my opinion about things that are going on. And when something is said within the NBA ranks, you should have an opinion about it if you're a fan of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell us about yourself. Why do they yeah. call you the big swagger? Well, Joe Tessitore gave me that name <laughs> my first year. He was the host for a show I do on SEC Network called SEC Nation. And uh, it was because I was clean, because I dressed nice for a big guy. He was like, you know what, I'm gonna call you the big swag goo. <laughs> and uh, the name just stuck. He started calling me that, and people started calling me that when I was doing hits and uh, interviews all over the place. But uh, that's where it came from, man. And then the, he, he, Joe always told me, man, your person, you got a big personality. Like people gravitate to you, you have a good time. Um, so that's a part of what the nickname uh, became. And now it's, now it's what everybody calls me. Yeah. <laughs> Why do we all care so much about the Cowboys? Um, because the Cowboys, and I tell people all the time, the Cowboys are the face of the thing that we cherish the most in sports in this country. Football, and they're the most popular product. Even though the New England Patriots are winning all the Super Bowls, the Cowboys are, they're America's team. They are, and, and, people, and people can debate that and Take it out of context. It's there is a reason that it's the highest grossing franchise. There's a reason it's worth more than any other franchise in the NFL because people gravitate to it. It's it was a show called Dallas um, and and it's been a soap opera. It's been a storied franchise. They've had some of the biggest names to ever play in the NFL. The, the all time leading rusher Emmitt Smith played for the Dallas Cowboys. America's sweetheart, darling, before Tim Tebow came to existence was Roger Staubach. They've had multiple Hall of Famers. It's been so many things of rich tradition that we, we, we hold and we cherish in this country so much. That's what the Dallas Cowboys embody.